gas production in India has declined in the last few years. It was 143 mmSCMD. Now mmSCMD, let me call it the unit. The unit is mmSCMD. So 143.1 in 2010-11 to 111.44 in 2012-13, a decline of almost 32 mmSCMD. Of this, ONGC and Oil India produce about 70 mmSCMD. They are the largest producers, but this has been stagnant for many years at about 70 mmSCMD. Private sector production or joint venture production declined from about 73 mmSCMD in 2010-11 to only 40 mmSCMD in 2012-13. So there's a decline of about 33 mmSCMD. As a result, imports are rising. LNG imports were 20% of total consumption in 2010-11. It increased to 25% in 2011-12 and to 30% in 2012-13. In terms of quantity, it increased from 38 mmSCMD to 50 mmSCMD. At the current rate, it is expected to Imports are expected to increase from the current level about 50 mmSCMD to 234 mmSCMD by the year 2016-17. I want you to note this. Current level of imports is about 50 mmSCMD and the current rate of consumption growth and the current rate of production of the country imports will rise to 234 mmSCMD. Now look at the prices. Under the contract so far, we are paying $4.20 for domestic production. The import prices are much higher. LNG imports in 2012-13 average between 9 to 10 dollars per MMBTU. Spot purchases range from 11 to 12 dollars per MMBTU. In fact, international prices are even higher. Gale, for example, has term contracts ranging from $11 to $13.6. Gazprom, for example, is selling gas to Gale or contracted to sell gas to Gale at $13.6. There's another Gale contract for $12 to $14. Petronet has a term contract with Rascas for $13. So on the one hand, we are paying $4.20. Imports can go anywhere from $9 to $10 to $13. For every unit of gas that we do not produce in India, it doesn't mean we are consuming one unit less. We are importing that one unit. So every unit of gas that is not produced, there is no saving of money. There is actually a huge price to be paid. You have to buy the gas at 11 12 13 dollars. Today, 
we are producing roughly 70% of our consumption and importing 30%. But if there is no greater production in India, this is going to reverse. This is going to reverse by the year 2025. It will reverse to, we will produce 30% and begin to import 70%. That import bill is simply unsustainable. I mean, I think you must understand that. We simply do not have the money to import, say, anything like 200, 300, 400 MMS CMD, at whatever price prevails. We simply don't have that kind of money. The case for increasing domestic production is a compelling case. No one can say that India can meet its gas requirements by imports. We have to increase domestic production. Now what is happening is domestic production will go up only if investments are made. Investments are not being made currently. The public sector, the national oil companies can be told to invest and we are asking them to invest and they will invest. But that will be hardly sufficient to meet our requirements. We must get private investment, both Indian private investment and foreign investment. Among the major oil companies of the world, many are not in India. I can reel off a number of names which are not in India, not investing in India, because they don't think it's worthwhile or advantageous for them to invest in India. They will rather invest in Venezuela. They will rather invest off the shore of Indonesia. They will invest in Azerbaijan. They will invest in uh, the Caspian Sea or wherever. Where. They don't want to invest in India. That's why you don't see any of the major oil companies in India. The only ones are Shell, Cane, and now BP. There are no other companies here. Investments in India in the last five, four years, five years, 2007-8 was about $6 billion. 2008-9 was about $6.3 billion. 2009-10 came down to $4.7 billion. 2010-11 came down to $3.6 billion, and 2011-12 came down to $1.8 billion. So investment in India is declining. At the same time, Indian promoters are investing abroad. In the last 10 years, they have invested $27 billion outside. And $10 billion are in the pipeline for overseas investment. The only way to correct it is to give the investor a reasonable price, which will attract him to make the investment here so that we can increase our domestic production. The alternative is to say, we will do without gas. After all, for centuries, India has done without gas. We can do without gas. Is that an alternative? That's simply not an alternative. Our fertilizer depends on gas. Our power plants depend on gas. Cooking gas, but there's a tremendous demand. The 14 crore consumers on the register require gas. And if we want to expand production, we must have gas. There are many power plants that are stranded. We are not able to add to fertilizer production capacity because there is no gas. We have laid a pipeline in the hope that fertilizer plants will come up all over the, along the pipeline, but there is no gas. The choice is to live without gas or to produce gas 
because the third alternative of importing gas is simply unaffordable for India. You can import some gas, but not these staggering amounts. We simply don't have that kind of money. Therefore, we appointed the Rangarajan Committee to tell us how to reprice the gas that is produced in India. All contracts will be in force. No contract is being interfered with. All contractual price will remain in force until the contract runs out. So nobody is getting an advantage on existing contracts. That is point number one. Point number two the new price regime will come into force from 1-4-2014, not before that. The meanwhile, we hope investments will take place or investments will start flowing into the country. Thirdly, in terms of the law and the contract, the government of India takes the share of the profit both under the current production sharing agreement where profit petroleum is shared with the government of India as well as under the proposed profit sharing agreements where the profit will be shared with the government of India. So if there is any profit or additional profit to be made because of the higher price, government of India will share in the profit. And the last point that I wish to make before I request Mr. Moili Saab to speak to you is that at the moment, we are fixing only output prices. This is the price we are fixing for the gas. This will indeed have an impact on the consumer, but those prices are not being fixed out today. We are only fixing the output prices. When gas is supplied to power, when gas is supplied to fertilizer industry, what is the price at which it should be supplied to a power plant what is the price it should be supplied to a fertilizer plant in order to make power affordable and fertilizer affordable will still be decided. That can still be decided between now and 1st of April. This is the point that I wish to make. Today, we have fi yesterday, we fixed only output prices of gas. We have not fixed the input price where gas is an input. I hope I'm making myself clear. Yes, the power ministry has raised issues, the fertilizer ministry has raised issues, we are fully conscious of those issues, they will be addressed in course of time. Obviously power cannot become unaffordable, obviously fertilizer cannot become unaffordable to the consumer, so we will have to fix the input price of gas in course of time, which we will do. Today we have only fixed the output price of gas in order to attract investment into India, in order to see that the economy keeps moving. Otherwise, the economy will come to a grinding halt without power, without fertilizer, without cooking gas. The formula has been accepted uh, with a modification, namely that spot prices will not be taken into account. Rangarajan formula wanted a weighted average including spot prices, but that is being kept out. The spot prices, that is the prices of gas that we purchase on the spot, that is being kept out and only the other prices will be taken for working out the weighted average price.